everything you need, God has supplied for you. And God has a perfect plan for your life. I started my series last week, You Are Enough. You got enough, you got everything you need, but you got to connect with God. Matthew 6 and 33 says this, but first and, first and most importantly, seek, aim, strive after his kingdom, his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. 2 Peter 1.3 says this, his divine power has bestowed, given unto us absolutely everything necessary for our dynamic spiritual life and godliness through the true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his glory and excellence. I want you to repeat after me, repeat after me. I have everything I need. Today, I'm going to teach about a man named Moses. God could have rescued the Israelites from Egypt without Moses, but he chose to work through Moses. Appearing in a burning bush, he says, Moses, Moses. And this is Exodus 2, I'm paraphrasing. Exodus 3, excuse me. Exodus 3, 7 reads, The Lord said, I have in fact seen the affliction and suffering of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters, their oppressors. I know their pain and suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a land that's good and spacious, a land flowing with milk and honey, plenty, to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Now the whole cry, the cry of the children of Israel have come to me, and I've also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So here's the mission, verse 10. Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, and then my people, and bring my people, the children of Israel, out. I want you to understand God is not about accidents, He's about appointments. And what you think is an accident is an appointment. You sometimes try to figure out how did I get in this spot? God doesn't have accidents, He just has appointments. And God will use what you think is a misstep to put you right in position. So now Moses is saying, why me? Uh, if you went to Exodus chapter 2, the Bible says that uh, a Levite family uh, had a child, and the child was Moses, and they looked at him as a, b a beautiful child, and uh, they wanted to figure out a way to, to protect him, so they, they made a basket, and they, they dropped him in the Nile River. Now, what's the odds of dropping a baby in the Nile River and the person that picks up the baby takes him to the house? And so they're watching the water go. Now, that's a whole other scripture because God controls the streams and the water. But, but the baby ended up where it's supposed to end up, to be in a house to be taught the law. Not realizing why he would have to know the law, because see, God had his steps ordered. And though he, they thought it might have been an accident, it was an appointment. Psalms 139.15 reads, Psalms 139.15 reads this. Let's read this together, church. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day passed. 
That right there should give you some pause. Am I on course? Have I been hearing God's voice so where I'm supposed to be? All right, let's jump back in Exodus 311. Here it is. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out? Everyone say, excuse number one. Okay, today I'm going to let y'all know there's five excuses. Okay? And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got one too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so Moses, he, he had some excuses. Look at your neighbor and say, do you have excuses? He, he says this, but Moses says, who am I that I should go? So his first issue was identity. You will not do what God tells you to do because you're struggling with who you are. Jesus said this, who do men say I am? Remember when the, the devil tempted Jesus, he says, if you are the son of God. If, why? Because see, the devil comes after your identity because you can't be who all God's called you to be if you don't know who you are. So the trick is to see, so first thing, Moses, I, who am I? So I want to help some people today because some of you don't know who you are. So there's so many ways to define it, but I'm going to give you 10 to tell you who you are. Okay, number one, you're a child of God. If nothing else, you're a child of God. Okay, let's, let's read John 1, 15. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. Say, neighbor, I don't know about you. I may not know my daddy well, but I know I'm a child of God. Number two, number two, you are the image of God. Genesis 1, 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. I am made in the image of God. Number three, you're chosen. Oh, Jesus. He says this in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Okay, okay. Number four, number four. You're God's handiwork. Ephesians 2, 10. For we are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. I'm God's handiwork. I don't know what they said about you, but I'm telling who you are. Number five, you're a citizen of heaven. Ooh, Jesus. You don't, you, you don't need a green card. Hallelujah. You don't need a passport. Hallelujah. It says in Philippians 3.20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we are eagerly awaiting the saving from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, number six, number six, you're more than a conqueror. Oh, glory to God. Uh, Romans 8, 37 says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Glory to God. Okay, number seven, say, neighbor, I'm brand new. The Bible says you're a new creature. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a what? New creature. All things passed away. Behold, all things are new. You know, I'm about to step into some water right here. Someone say, well, pastor, I'm confused. I'm confused. I said, okay. I said, what you confused about? He said, well, uh, I don't know if I like boys or girls. He said, you confused? I said, okay, okay. He said, he said you, I said, you confused? I said, okay. And then one, one person said, man, pastor, I'm just a whoremonger. I said, okay, okay. Another brother said, well, man, I just can't get rid of this weed. I said, okay, okay, okay. And I said, well, I, I had a spirit of, of, of a whoremonger. I had. But 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, but all things, behold, all things are what? So whatever issue you say you stuck with, 
when Christ Jesus, he makes everything what? So you just hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a struggle. Everybody do. But with Christ, I'm a what? A new creature. Is it easy? No. We will always have things that pull on us. Till you, lit, t t till, till you go to the grave, something's going to pull on you. Sin is sin. Amen? Look what Jeremiah said this. You are set apart. Before I was formed in the womb, he says, I knew you. Everyone say, I'm set apart. I'm designed. I'm specifically made to do something. You are not an accident. You are here on purpose. And when you start tapping in that, you walk different, you act different. Because you know God has a plan for you. Ah, number nine, you're a friend of God. Oh, gosh. John 15, 15 says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my father, I've made known to you. Oh, number 10, number 10, you're a masterpiece. What? For real. I know you don't like every curve on your body. I know you'll wish a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, a little bit thinner, a little bit fatter. But whatever, however God made you, you're a masterpiece. I praise you because I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Glory to God. It's a neighbor. Do you know who you are now? Okay, okay. So, Moses says, who am I? Here's God's answers. <laughs> he says, because, uh, you know, he's struggling with his identity. God says, certainly, I will be with you. He said, what you worry about? I got you. Romans 8.31 says, if God be for you, he says, and God says, certainly I'll be with you, and this will be a sign to you that as, as, as I go, as I sent you when, you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve and worship the Lord at this mountain. Verse 13, then Moses said to God, behold, when I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me, then they will say, what's his name? What shall I say? Everyone say excuse number two, inadequacy. So first off, he struggles with his identity. Then nextly, he struggles with inadequacy. I, I, what, what, what am I going to say? I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I love God because God, God's simple. Verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. He says, you shall say to the Israelites, I sent, <laughs> I am has sent me to you. Okay, well, just say I am. Uh, all of us at different times have struggled with our words, what to say. So I'm going to tell you what I do. Proverbs 16 and 1 is my go-to scripture. I go places all the time, and people always ask me questions, and I'm not sure what to say. So this is what I do. Write it down. Keep it for the rest of your life. It's nothing special. It's the Bible, but it works. Look what it says in Proverbs 16 and 1. The plans and reflections of the heart belong to man, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So whenever I'm in a meeting or some place where they think I'm really smart, Holy Spirit, your word says in Proverbs 16 and 1, that if I prepare my heart, you'll give me the words. And your word says you'll never suffer me to embarrassment. So I need something to say right now. Amen. Trust in the Lord with yeah, lean not to your own understanding. I need a word, Lord. What should I say? Praise the Lord. Back into Exodus. Then Moses answered the Lord and said, What if they will not believe me or take me seriously what I say? For they may say the Lord has not appeared to you. His third issue, credibility. So he had an identity issue. He had an inadequacy issue. And he had a credibility issue. I'm trying to deal with all your issues today. Ah. 
Now, God had already promised he got him, but still, you know, we got to have a next, next excuse. Look what God says in verse 2. And the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? Remember, God will never give you something to do that he hasn't already equipped you with. The... He says, what is in your hand? He said, a staff. Then he says, throw it on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a living serpent like the royal symbol of the crown of Pharaoh, and Moses ran from it. Verse 4, but the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and grasp the tail. So he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand. My God. Verse 5, you shall do this to the Lord, so the elders may believe the Lord and the God of your fathers and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Most only appear to you. Verse 6, verse 6, the Lord also said to him, put your hand in your robe where it covers your chest. So he put his hand in the robe, and when he took it out, his hand was leprous, as white as snow. Then God said, put it back in, and then it was normal again. So Moses said, okay, I could pick a steak up. I could make my hand be leprous and come back. He said, but what, but, 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 but. He says, okay, one more but. He says, next time, just throw some water on the ground, and it's going to turn to blood. So, so Moses said, okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, we, we would think that Moses would be good right now, right? Because every time he had the excuse, God gave him a what? An answer. Verse 10. Then Moses said, Lord, please, Lord, I'm not a man of words. So now he can't speak. How many of us do this with God? God tell you to do something. You got the first excuse, the second excuse, the third excuse, the fourth excuse. No, no, God is talking. God is talking to him. Look. Then Moses said, Lord, please, Lord, I'm not a man of words, eloquent, fluent. Neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am a, I'm slow of speech and tongue. This is number four, inability. So we have number one, identity. Number two, inadequacy. Glory to God. Number three, credibility. Number four, inability. You notice how we make excuses about we can't do nothing? Now, now, now let's work this out. <coughs> Here's God's answer. The Lord said to him, who made your mouth? Who makes the mute or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now then go, and even I will be with your mouth and will teach you what to say. Moses is telling God, what he cannot do. And God is telling Moses what he put in him. See, you can't tell the maker of you what you can't do because the maker of you already know what he put on the inside of you. So every excuse you're telling God, God saying, wait a second. I designed you a certain way to do a certain thing. I've called you to this. You can't tell me what you can't do. I'm the manufacturer. I know exactly what I put on the inside of you. And so many times in our faith walk, we tell God what we can't do. And God is saying, listen, I put this on the inside of you. You were born to do this. I made you for this. But, but we often want to tell God what we can't do. God said, what, what, what you talking about? I made your mouth. And if, if you go deep in the story, he kept on arguing. And God said, you know what? Aaron, he speak well. He a brother. Uh, we can work with him. And won't say excuses. Verse 13. But he said, please, Lord, send the message to rescue uh, Israel by someone else. Whoever else you choose. His last excuse, rejection. I'm just not willing to do it. But see, he wasn't willing to do it in the beginning. But, but he finally got to the, to the root issue. Bottom line, I just don't want to do it. Identity was an excuse. Inadequacy, credibility, inability. The bottom line is I, I just don't want to do it. Raise your hand if you know somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> Every excuse Moses made, God offered him a promise and provision. Having run out of excuses, Moses revealed the heart of the problem. 
I just don't want to do it. Now, let me give you some, let me help your faith. We had a, a Savior that had a similar issue. Let's go to Matthew 26, 39. It reads, he went a little further and bowed his face to the ground praying, my father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Oh, he did it again. A couple of verses down, verse 42. Then Jesus left for a second time and prayed, my cup, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. How many times have you had some cups? You're like, Lord, I, I don't want to drink this. All of us will have a cup we don't want to drink. All of us will have a, a thorn we can't get rid of. And all of us will have a cross we don't want to carry. Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. So that means you got one. You may not like your cross, but you got one. So every one of us will have a cup we don't want to drink, a thorn we can't get rid of, and a cross we don't want to carry. It's called life. And you wonder why bad things happen to good people. It's called life. Bad things happen to all people. The Bible says he reigns on the just and the unjust. It's a part of it. It's a part of life. But God be for you. 2 Timothy 1, 7 reads, <clears throat> as I close. Let's read it together, church. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and a sound judgment and personal discipline abilities to result in calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Okay, let's work on this a little bit. So, if God did not give me a spirit of fear, where did the spirit of fear come from? Now, those of you who pray with me in the morning time, you know the answer to the question, because you go to before school. Fear came in Genesis. The Bible says that after they ate the fruit, God was walking into the garden and he called to Adam and said, Adam, where are you? And Adam says, I hid because I was afraid. Fear was a byproduct of sin. Think about it, y'all. When you were younger, I know y'all don't sin no more. When y'all were younger and you took something you shouldn't have took, how did it feel when you walked away? Because something just captures you to where you just feel real nervous. When you lie, you just, you just don't know when you're going to get caught. I remember one time, y'all, uh, they gave me a progress report that was bad. So they said, take this home and let your parent look at it and sign it. What am I going to do that for? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to sign that progress report for myself. Because I don't read it, right? I read it. We don't need to explain to nobody else. I understand I'm not doing well. Why does everybody else need to know my progress? It's my progress report. So I signed my progress report, and I took it back, and I took the teacher, here you go. <laughs> she said, Jomo Cousins, <laughs> your chicken scratch look like the same chicken scratch I put his F on. So both of these, <laughs> your mama don't write like that. She had a bad day. You know, you keep on lying. Just keep on lying. Just. But when you sin, Fear pops in. That's why Proverbs 28 and 1 says, the righteous are bold as lions. 
When you're right standing with God, you bold. But when you're not, you're worried about what may happen because you know you're not doing right. Ah. So God did not give me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. The enemy is after your mind. He doesn't want you to have a sound mind. That's what the Bible says in James, a double-minded man is on stable in all his ways. That's why I got to lock in on this word. Renew my mind. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world any longer, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> last Sunday, I called Diesel Sunday. If you weren't here, you don't know what I'm talking about. But last Sunday, I said, I told Lee, I said, last Sunday is Diesel Sunday. This whole building smelt like diesel. And we had a generator working. And I said, you know, we were talking about the journey to here. And I said, for years, I felt God calling me to be a pastor. But guess what? I struggled with my identity. Then after I said, okay, I'm going to do it, I said, I'm not qualified. And I look at where we are today. I had to get past myself. And whenever God tells you to do something, you're going to have to get past you. Because the biggest stumbling block in obedience is you. What you can't do, what you, oh, your history. No, 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 no. If God's called you, he's equipped you. If God's called you, he'll give you everything you need. You're fully equipped. So that's why you got to remind yourself who you are. You think in the morning time I'm praying to you, I'm talking to me. I'm just letting you listen to me, talk to me. I repeat scripture. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above, not below. I'm blessed coming in and blessed coming out. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. My ladder shall be greater. As I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither enter the heart of man what God has in store for those who walk uprightly. Oh, I'm the image of God. I'm bold as a lion. I'm not backing up. God be for me, and if God be for me, who can be against me? This is but a momentary light affliction and cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and testing, for the testing of our faith produces patience, and let patience have its perfect work, that I may be complete and perfect and lacking nothing. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we may ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Father God, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Lord, your word says, if we have the faith of a mustard seed, speak to that mountain. Lord, I thank you for mountain moving faith. Lord, I thank you for yoke destroying faith. Lord, I thank you, I tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Lord, I thank you that your word says, and we know that all these things are going to work together for my good. Lord, I thank you that those who wait upon the Lord shall mount up <laughs> like wings of eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. Father God, I thank you that I speak to my mountain. Lord, I thank you for your word said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, speak to your mountain. Lord, your word said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Father God, I thank you that I'm the blood bought, blood washed child of God. Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Lord, I thank you that my ladder shall be greater. Lord, I thank you that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning time. 
Lord, I thank you that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Lord, I thank you that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be continually in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. He is a blind eye opener. He is a lame leg restorer. He is my healer. He is my restorer. He is my redeemer. Lord, I thank you that your word shall not return void, but it shall accomplish what you be. The Lord this day, I stand on your wall. Lord, your word says to stand when you've done all that you can. Stand. So, Father God, I thank you. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. For the world was formed by the Word of God. And it's the Word of God that's going to change your situation. I don't know what you're dealing with today, but I want you to put your hand on your chest, and I want you to prophesy to yourself, this is a new season, this is a new season, that yoke is destroyed, devil, get off, I'm God's property, oh, every plan you had, oh, I rebuke it, soul ties broken, that soul it is broken, that issue from your past is broken. Lord, as David said, create in me a clean heart, an upright spirit. Lord, I thank you that out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Body, line up to the world. Sickness must leave my body. Disease must leave my body. Lord, I thank you that my mind is stayed on you. And your word says a mind stayed on you shall be kept in perfect peace. I got my peace. John says this. Uh, John 14, 27. Jesus said this in John 14, 27. My peace I leave with you. Jesus said, not Jomo, my peace I leave with you. Let not your heart be troubled. You belong to God. Pull it down. Say, I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive that. I ask you right now, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus, your Lord and Savior? There's no greater time than now to make him your Lord and Savior. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned, all have fallen short of glory. None of us are perfect. None of us have it all together. We're all under construction. Romans 10 9 says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. I don't know where you are today in your faith walk, but today is a new day. There's a shift happening. You got to step into it. Don't let this moment pass you by. Some of you need to rededicate your life, recommit your life to Christ. Do better than you're doing. Some of you lost your way. Don't worry, God knows that too. God, Jesus told Simon Peter, after you go through your season, come back and strengthen your brothers. Your strength is built through your struggle. So if you're here today, you need to be saved or rededicated, or you need to join a church now's your time. With all eyes closed, all heads bowed, if you need to rededicate your life or you need salvation, just lift your hands in the air. I want to pray with you. 
God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Repeat after me, Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus who died for me and rose for me that I may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus, I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you for your blood that washes me clean. Thank you for forgiving me my sins. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Guide me, lead me, fill me. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. At the end of service, I want you to come tell a minister. There'll be ministers here at the altar. At the end of service, I want you to come and tell a minister uh, that change, you need to change, you want help. Right now, we're going to receive our tithe and offering. For those who are streaming, you go to our website, lfcc.tv forward slash pray, lfcc.tv forward slash pray, and let us know whether you need prayer, salvation, or rededication.